All right, we are going to talk about the circulatory and the cardiovascular and lymphatic systems. So um, the objective is to learn the structure and function of the cardiovascular and the lymphatic systems. I need you, uh, just to start this, try to place the heart, the blood, the circulatory system, and a erythrocyte in order from most simple to most complex. We will talk about that part tomorrow. So there are three types of circulation. You have a coronary. Coronary circulation is just the arteries and veins that supply the heart with blood. Obviously, the heart needs blood because the blood carries oxygen and nutrients with it, and your heart needs oxygen and nutrients to beat. And so when it beats, it can pass the rest of your blood and uh, nutrients onto the rest of your body. There's pulmonary circulation. Pulmonary arteries carries deoxygenated blood, so blood without oxygen, to the lungs to get rid of carbon dioxide, and the pulmonary vein carries oxygen back to the heart so that it can be pumped to the rest of the body. Then there's the systemic circulation. Okay, systemic circulation is arteries bring oxygenated blood to the body cells and veins return deoxygenated blood back to the heart where it will circle again. So, again, in this diagram, okay, we've got deoxygenated blood coming from the cells from the rest of the body into the heart. It's pumped out to the lungs where it can get rid of carbon dioxide and pick up oxygen. Then the oxygenated blood heads back to the heart and gets pumped out again to the rest of the body so that the rest of the body can get oxygen. So the function of the circulatory system or cardiovascular system is to carry nutrients and oxygen to cells and waste and carbon dioxide away from cells. It contains cells that fight disease and includes the heart, the blood vessels, and the blood. So the heart, this is the big one that everyone thinks about when they think of the cardiovascular or circulatory system. Um, the heart pumps blood to all the parts of the body, and it has four chambers, okay? We have the atria, or atrium. This is the upper two chambers that receive blood. Then we have the ventricles. That's the lower two chambers that pump blood. Um, the right ventricle pumps blood to the lungs, while as the left ventricle pumps blood to the body. So the left ventricle is much more muscular than the right ventricle. Thinking about what you just learned, specifically about where they pump blood to, why do you think the heart has evolved in such a way? So think about it, guys. The right pumps blood to the lungs, just the lungs. And remember, the lungs are right next to the heart. Your heart's in your chest, your lungs are in your chest. So when the blood uh, leaves the heart, it doesn't have to pump very hard to get to where it's going. If the right were as strong as the left, the capillaries of the lungs would explode because your blood pressure in your lungs would be so full or so high. Um, however, when the heart has to pump to get the blood out to the rest of your body, it's pumping blood that's literally going to go all the way down to your toes and all the way up to the top of your head. And so it has to pump a lot harder or be a lot stronger to get the blood where it's got to go. So as blood returns from the systemic circulation okay, of the bo body, it follows this path. So this is the superior vena cava. Okay, Blood comes in here. Then it goes into the right atrium. It goes through this valve called the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. Then it goes out the pulm uh, pulm pulmonic, we call it the pulmonary valve, okay? And it goes out the pulmonary or pulmonic artery to the lungs. Then once it's gotten its oxygen from the lungs, it comes back in the pulmonary vein Okay, the pulmonary vein empties into the left atrium. Okay, the left atrium. It goes through this valve called the mitral valve into the left ventricle. Then it goes from the left ventricle out the aortic valve. Okay, the aortic valve, which is right here. Um, and then goes into the either ascending to your brain or the descending to the rest of your body aorta. Okay, so you need to make sure you color and label your heart diagram following the path here provided. All right, blood vessels. These carry blood to every cell. So arteries get oxygen-rich blood away from the heart to the body. So artery A for away. 
So arteries carry oxygen-rich blood away from the heart to the body. Veins, okay, veins get, give oxygen-poor blood, blood without much oxygen, back to the heart. Capillaries are microscopic blood vessels. They connect to the arteries to the veins, and they tend to be only one cell thick, so they're very thin. Our capillaries are very good because they allow nutrients and oxygen to diffuse out of the capillary and into the cells. It also allows waste and carbon dioxide to diffuse back into the capillary so that it can be carried back to the heart and then to the lungs to be gotten rid of. So parts of blood. So blood is made up of lots of different things, a lot more complex than you would think. So blood is made of plasma, which is a watery part of blood that carries nutrients, minerals, oxy and oxygen to the cells and carries waste away. Then you have red blood cells. Remember, these are made in your bone marrow of your bone, the center of your bones. These cells carry oxygen to the body cells using an iron-containing protein called hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is actually the molecule that holds the oxygen, and these red blood cells actually hold the hemoglobin. So they're very important. Then you have white blood cells. These are also made in bone marrow, and these are part of your immune system. They fight bacteria and viruses. And then you have platelets. Platelets are cell fragments, so parts of cells, and they help in the process of clotting. So when you cut yourself, okay, you cut yourself, you cut yourself open, um, and you're bleeding, these little cell fragments block up that blood so that you don't bleed out, okay? These cell fragments are very important with clotting your blood. So there are blood types, and you should remember this from when we did genetics. There are four phenotypes for human blood. You have A, B, AB, and O. Depending on what blood type you are, you're going to have a certain type of antigen on the surface of your blood. If you remember, that was, remember I talked about drawing the different labels on your cells so that you can identify them as yours? You also have certain types of antibodies floating in your blood plasma. Um, an antigen is a sugar-based receptor that's attached to the surface, essentially like a name tag. And the antibody is a protein that is produced to get rid of foreign invaders. Okay? So, basically what we're looking at is an antigen. Okay? So this is, on your blood cells, this is what all the antigens look like if you're type A. And the plasma antibodies you have are trying to get rid of this. Okay? If you're type B, you have this type of um, antigen. And your antibodies will get rid of this type of anti, um, this type of uh, organism. If you're AB, you don't have any antibodies because you have both types of antigen on your cell. And if you are type O, you don't have any antigens, and you have both types of antibodies on your cell. So that means any cell that has any of these will get killed and taken care of by your antibodies. So how they work. So antigens and antibodies work like a lock and a key. If you mix two together that shouldn't be mixed, they lock together and the result could be fatal. This is especially important when dealing with blood transfusions. In a blood transfusion, a patient receives blood cells without antibodies from a donor. Let's say you have a type um, a type blood and you need a transfusion. If you receive B type blood by accident, the B antibodies in your blood will attach to the B antigens on the donor's body cell, causing the blood to clot. We'll just say clot. I'm not going to tell you that big word. And clotting inside your body can lead to a heart attack, stroke, and sometimes even death. So it's really important that you get the correct type of blood so that the antigens in your body don't connect and try to kill off those um, blood cells that you're getting. Um, so who can donate to? This was another thing everyone was talking about. So you've learned that certain blood types uh, together can't mix, but what type of blood can go together? So think back to our chart. A blood cells have B antigen or antibodies and can receive blood from A or O with no antigens, or excuse me, yes, no antigens. B has A-type antibodies and can receive blood from B and O. AB blood type has no antibodies and can receive blood from 
everyone. So if you're a type AB, you can get blood from anyone. If you are a type O, you have both the A and the B antibodies, and so you can only receive from O. So O is the universal donor, and AB is the universal recipient, the person who can get blood from everyone. So the lymphatic or immune system, okay, its function is to filter and return lymph or fluid to the bloodstream. This is what helps fight diseases when you're sick. Lymph consists of water, glucose, and white blood cells. And this flows through your veins and arteries just like blood does. Lymph nodes filter lymph. <coughs> Excuse me. Filter the lymph, uh, making sure to trap bacteria that's foreign. It also makes white blood cells and enlarges when you're fighting disease. So if you've ever had your glands checked under your chin, those are lymph nodes, and so they get swollen when you're fighting something off. Lymph vessels move, uh, lymph moves through these vessels, and it moves through skeletal and muscle, skeletal muscle contraction. Okay, skeletal muscle, and connects to the circulatory system. Understand that it connects to the circulatory system through lymphatic veins in the chest that return the filtered fluid back to the bloodstream. So it mostly flows through your normal blood, but there are lymphatic veins, um, and they go off to the lymph nodes where they get cleaned, and then they return to the circulatory system. All right, so please let me know if you have any questions. I hope this makes sense. Thanks.